let's go ahead to key one select. We'll just manipulate this one again. Okay. Uh, let, key one select. Uh, and let's go to uh, our key types, which will be over on your right hand side. Okay. So I have Chroma and, key right now. Correct. So we're going to see the difference if you were to switch the key type while it's still live. Okay. So you go ahead and hit self key for me. Okay. Oh, yeah. I get that similar thing we saw earlier. I guess if I change the background image, I get a similar example to what we had uh, right. on Keynote earlier. Yep, exactly. And so what it's doing is with that, it's just looking at the brightness. It's literally looking at a grayscale. It's looking from the darkest black to the whitest white. Gotcha. It's not the kind of color, anything along those lines, which you can see in the preview window because we're still showing alpha. It's all grayscale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now what we would use that for is for lyrics on the weekend. Okay. Uh, I think I have some lyrics running in CG1. So I guess I would just select uh, mm -hmm. that in my key source. That's correct. Uh, bus right here. Okay, so my top row buttons, I'll select CG1. Okay, so now I've got a preview. Now this just looks like lyrics full screen. This doesn't look any different. My, uh, my Luma map. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So what's happening is with what you're looking at is it's only looking at the white and the black. Remember, with a okay. self key, it's looking at that grayscale. And with lyrics, we have all of our lyrics on a black slide, and our font is white. That's what makes it super simple to be able to use a self key with lyrics rather than having to use a chroma key and have to worry about that spill range or any kind of variation or non-sharpness with the graphic or with the lyric you're trying to use. Gotcha. This is um, just cut and dry. So I'm going to do this just so we can demo this. I'm just gonna put this over the splash and make this full. Um, now, one thing I notice a lot of times is my text is just like, we have a drop shadow built into ProPresenter, but my text doesn't actually show that drop shadow. Right. Now, why is that? Um, so what's happening is because you have it as a self key and it's that grayscale, mm -hmm. it's looking for the to cut out any black or anything in that range. Okay. Uh, so with the drop shadow by default, it's usually going to be black. So it is keying out when you're initializing that key or pushing that key live. Gotcha. So what we need to do on our end is make some some tweaks or adjustments with that. And first, you want to start out with Pro Presenter. Okay. Uh, you want to make changes. Uh, you don't want the drop shadow to be black. You want it to be a dark gray. All right, so I'm going to do this real quick. And y'all can't see this, but I'm actually going to change the shadow in ProPresenter to actually be like a, a dark gray, like we said. And okay. I'm going to change, I'm going to increase the, if you guys are in ProPresenter, this is Pro Tips, the length and the radius a little bit to four. Okay, so I so instead of my drop shadow being black, I made it dark gray, or kind of like lighter gray. So on my next slide, we should see that. Okay, so I don't see much of a difference there, right? But I made some pretty extreme adjustments. So how else can we uh, tweak that? So the next thing you need to do is on the switcher side. Okay. You need to go into. Uh, you have your key one select because that's what we changed to the self key. I'm going to click it again because it looks like my menu is somewhere else. Yes. Okay. So I have different settings here now. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is uh, with your, you see your menu, it's clip gain and transparency. Yep. Um, so what we need to do is we need to first uh, drop the gain all the way to zero. Okay. Let's do that. And because what's going to happen is with your clip, your clip is adjusting how much uh, value uh, in terms of brightness, mm -hmm. keying out and allowing to stay. Okay. So if you were to drop clip all, all the way to zero, right, it's only going to do, do a very small range of black. Okay. So I dropped it all the way to zero and now it's uh, black. Now it's yeah. Yeah. So you want to jump that back up just a little bit, slowly go back, oh, and, adjust, okay. and you'll start seeing your graphic come back. Yeah, so now I've got a really harsh shadow. Right. So now that's where game comes into play. 
that's where it's actually going to uh, ray or increase the range of what shade is allowed. So with a drop shadow, it's going to taper off. It's not just one flat color. Uh, it's built to kind of fade out. Okay. So this gain is actually going to help you adjust that. So if you slowly push gain up. Okay, I'm going to do that. Oops. And now my background starts to turn black, though. Right. So now this is where you need to go back and readjust clip. Okay. So bring that up a little bit. Allow more of a range. And you slowly start seeing your graphic come back. Yep. Uh, so this is where you get into finagling the settings where it's like, okay, I want to, you want to keep uh, the integrity of the graphic or the background. Right. Uh, but at the same time, you want to make that lyric or the self key as crisp as possible for, uh, you know, the people that are watching it. You don't want a half transposed graphic on the screen. Gotcha. So I've kind of got them both set to around 13 or 14, and that looks pretty good, honestly. Yeah, I think it looks great. Um, and then that's that's ultimately up to you, uh, you know, leading your team, how you're setting it up, uh, what you're trying to accomplish inside the room that you're broadcasting this to. Gotcha. Um, it's just really just messing or kind of messing around and seeing what setting works best for your venue.